Hey guys, Brent Hope Build Show, talking today about pediments and how to build them. Two tricks you gotta get right. Come join me. Okay guys, so the pediment. We looked at the history and kind of why it looks the way it does and how it goes together and how it's organized. I bought this pediment from a architectural salvage yard. I bought it because they got some things right that I want to be able to teach and show. I said in the last video, one of the keys is the split fillet. Remember a fillet is a type of molding. Here is our, our crown, our cymation, right? Corona bed mold. We've got a scotia, a fillet, and a cymorecta, right? So we've got the three different moldings within this molding, right? And so the split fillet is this molding here that my pivot point for my pediment pivots on this point right there. And that means that this is the point where it breaks. Now, Remember, I also told you that this molding does not run across here, okay? Notice that my Scotia, my Scotia comes across here, our fillet's shown, right? But this is our pivot point. Notice this does not run across here, okay? Remember, this is in ancient, ancient classical architecture. This was a gutter, right? And so this doesn't go across here. There's no need for a gutter in this spot. So split fillet, right? You're seeing how these, these things come together. Second thing is, is this what's called a raked molding. Now, a raked molding is a molding that has a different projection, okay, or a different cut um, because the angles are different. If I make this, this is a straight 45, right? But when I pitch this up and it comes down, it's no longer a 45. A rake molding is basically, if I take this, this board and I cut a 45 on it, right? And I take this straight edge and I put them together, notice that they don't line up. Because I've cut an angle across there, I've made the molding much longer, right? And so that original shape of the molding no longer fits, right? Even the bead, as you can see right here, doesn't work anymore. So a raked molding means that I'm going to have some challenges here and here. Okay, now this is a broken pediment. Remember I talked to you about different types of pediments. This is probably from the 1940s, okay? So this is still when they knew how to build them properly, right? We've got a little urn here. This kind of follows some classical architecture. But what happens is, and you can really see the rake molding here, because if I just looked at this molding by itself, I would say it's very long and flat, right? There's not a lot of projection to it. But what's happening is because this molding's running up and then running straight that way, it's longer on this side than it is on this side, right? And so I've got these moldings become very flat as they rake. So the trick in this thing is if we're building a straight pediment, we don't have this raking molding here, but we do have this, this challenge of building this piece here. Okay, so we've looked at this, you know, broken pediment in the back, right? It's got these great details, this raking molding. There's really kind of two key things that we've got to build and we've got to cut, okay, that make this difficult. One is that split fillet, okay? And then two is the raking molding. Now, to, to help me do this, I've drawn it down on the table, right? And so if I do my little mock-up here and, and bring it over here, it is, associated with this. So we've got, right, we've got our, our freeze down here, right, our door casings here, our architraves here, and then our pediment goes right up over top over it, right? So the reason I draw this on paper so that I can work out my angles, right? I've already got this put together and already got it made. It's, it's very lightly tacked together right now. Uh, with some pin nails. I put this together like this so that I could figure it out, right? I did not just come out here and just cut, cut, cut. There are things that we have to figure out, some tools that you'll need. I use this stair gauge, okay? And what it helps me do is figure out the molding. So when I lay it down on paper, I can lay my stair gauge down on these moldings and actually go, oh yeah, that's you know 22 degrees or that's 68 degrees, right? And so I can set my molding on here use my stair gauge and actually practice with and try out some different cuts, right? So I am cutting and shaping and, and practicing with these things. And I'm just telling you the hardest ones are 
this molding right here, this raking molding, and then this split fillet. I'm gonna walk you through those two things. First is, you need to realize that all we're dealing with is we're playing with the moldings that are in our cornice, right? We've got a bed mold, a corona, and a cymation, right? And so we're using those moldings, and I just, as I said, we've pivoted this cornice up, and that's what creates our pediment. And if you watch my other videos, you'll know that that 22 and a half degree slope here comes from classical antiquity. There are other slopes that work, okay? This is the one I think looks the best, okay? So that's the one we're gonna use here. Now, if you watch my other videos on building a door header, you know that I don't have to rebuild this part. I don't have to rebuild the fascia, the bed mold, the corona, right? Those are all things that are, nothing changes there. The only thing that changes is my cymation, my crown molding. And what I did was I did, I did one molding kind of for an exterior, right? One cornice for an exterior and I did one cornice for like an interior over an interior door. For this exterior pediment, I wanted to use a bigger crown, right? Something that looks like an exterior molding, doesn't look like a furniture molding, doesn't look like a small molding. So I'm using this Kukin crown, right? Now what's gonna happen is I'm going to end up ripping this thing off right there at that cut so that this is, there's my fillet, right? The fillet is this, this black piece right there, okay? That's my fillet molding. Remember, we, look, we looked at that in the last video, okay? So I want this ripped right there. And what I'll do is I'll set it up on the table saw in its, you know, standing position. I won't run it, run it like this, but I'll run it, you know, so that I've got this against the fence and this against the ground. And I'm gonna rip my, this right through here so that I'm left with this full molding. Now, that is gonna be the, the bottom part of my cornice that runs across here. And that's what's here, right? You can see that that molding is sitting right there. And what happens is, is that this comes across and at 45 straight down, okay? So this is an easy cut, no problems yet. What happens is, is that when this molding, and you're gonna need extra of this molding, but you realize you're gonna need probably twice as much or 50% as much because you're going to be ripping pieces off. This piece is going to, I'm also going to run this as a separate piece. These are not, these are not attached, right? I, I break those off so they're separate. And then this comes down and lands on top of here. I'll show you that cut in a sec. Once I've got this molding off and I've got some length of this top molding, right? I'm going to run it just like I run the other ones, but I'm gonna play with this cut and how these come together, and I'll show you that molding in a sec. But if you look at the back side of this, right, notice that this molding is pitched up, okay? And this is where you're playing with the rake, okay? In that, it's coming around and I couldn't keep it flat against there. I had to pitch it so that it matched the pitch of this coming down, right? So because this molding goes up and rakes up, I also have to pitch this molding up and that's why there's a gap here. That's why I've split it so that you, so that I can make these moldings line up. So this is how, right, because I've got this rake coming this way, I've got to split these moldings up. I got to run them separately. And then this, the only point they're going to be touching is right here at this point, because this has to express the angle of my pediment. And that's how I play around with that raking molding and make that work. But maybe this expresses it best, right? That I've split this molding in two. Remember I was talking about splitting that molding and taking two parts. And one part is this molding right, which you see there. And then the other part is this molding. So I've got, you know, one part here and two parts there, right? So that this is split into two different moldings. That's the way I get around the rake and make this pediment work in kind of in a production manner. Historically, the way to do it, and I've seen in some molding catalogs, they actually offered the crown and then the rake for the crown, right? And so there's a way to figure this out mathematically so that I could actually get this molding down here reshaped in a different form so that it would match this molding depending on my rake. Now, in order to do that, it depends on your you know pitch, right? You can't have a 12 and 12 and a 4 and 12 make the same molding, but those rakes are available. I'm talking about something that you're building out on the job side and don't really have time to get a custom molding for, you know, a foot long of molding, right? And so we're gonna try to cheat our way around this rake, and this is our cheat by splitting that molding in two and running it back the other way.
Now, another way to do it is just kind of an off the shelf molding. If you don't have the Cucan, this is what's like called an 8016 crown. It's a very common crown, goes back to the turn of the century. In this case, you would rip this molding right here, okay? So that you would have a small cavetto on the bottom, right? And then you'd have, so you have two parts molding one, two, and you'd be doing the same thing as we did here, right? But I've got to rip these off so that this cavetto can run around and these place, these things are treated separately. Now, the third way of doing it is what I did with this molding is I took a cucan crown, okay? And this is that cucan molding that I really like because it can be a supporting molding or it can be a terminating molding, right? Depending on what we want it to do. And in this case, here's my fillet, right? This part right there. And what I did was I just took a simple cove mold, right? So because I am splitting my crown anyway, because I'm taking my summation, I'm splitting into two moldings, you can use two separate moldings. You can use a cove, which is what this is, and run it around, drop it down, 45 degree angles be done, and then you run it up here the same way. And then what I, all I'm doing is I take a separate piece of crown, this, this Cucan crown, and I run it up this way. And you'll see on the back side of this, this cornice, which is just tacked together, if I show you the back side, right, how this pitches and how this is separate from that cove molding, right? So that this is a separate molding from this. They're not even the same woods, right? But that's a way to kind of get around, playing around with this pediment and playing with those raking moldings and these different cuts. So again, the difficult part of this, you know, building a pediment is nothing below that scotia, right? Nothing below, below that cove mold, below the, the lower part of that slimation. It's all the upper part. Let me show you the two, you know, cuts that are tricks and a block I've used in order to make this cut on the job site where you can build this up and, and take care of it in an easy way. Real quick, the way I, I figured out to do it right was creating this jig. The challenge is, is that this molding, as it comes down right here, this molding, as I take my thing apart, is at a 68 and a half degrees, right? Now, why is that? Well, my pitch of my pediment is at 22 and a half, right? So the difference to get to 90, right, is 68 and a half. Now, you come to your chop saw, you realize you don't have a 68 and a half. I can get to about 60 there, but I can't get any closer. The quicker and better way to do it is to create a block like this. Now, you want enough beef here so that you can put your molding on it, but you'll see I got a right and a left, both at 22 and a half degrees. Then I can just take this down and I've got it marked where it's supposed to be. I clamp this down and then I can hold my molding in here like this, right? And I know and can cut it 68 and a half degrees. I've got it 22 and a half. And so that way you're just putting a block on your, on your chop saw. You've already got the angle. So this stays at zero. And then you bring your, your thing in here and cut your, your degree. Then when this comes together, right, when I'm trying to put, moot these together, that's the way I get that, that really crazy angled cut there is by cutting it that way. Okay guys, so building a pediment, right? There's a few tricks. It's that fillet molding where it splits, right? It's cutting that raking molding and making those work together. Kind of showed you a hack today. A couple quick ways to make those cuts on a table saw where you get into 68 degree cuts and you don't really have a way to do that. Fun, quick ways of building a pediment, make you look like a champion, show your builder, show your client the great stuff you can do. Hope this helps. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Home Millwork, Home Homes. Sign up for the newsletter. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.